Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about Fast Hugs Bit. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be What is Fast Hugs Bit? What is the use of fast hugs bed in ICU? What are the nursing considerations? Let's get into the session. Fast hugs bed provides a standardized framework for nursing care in the intensive care unit. It ensures that key aspects of care are consistently addressed, promoting a systematic approach to patient management. In 2005, Jean-Louis Vincent introduced the fast hug mnemonic as a means of identifying and checking some of the key aspects in the general care of all critically ill patients. This was subsequently updated to fast hugs bed mnemonic by Vincent and Hatton. Now, uses of fast hugs bit. It can be used as a mental checklist when individual staff members are attending the patients. It improves quality of patient care. It provides patient comfort and well-being. Components like pain management, sedation and glucose control directly contribute to the patient's comfort and well-being. Nurses monitor and adjust medications to ensure the patient is as comfortable as possible. Now, each letter in the mnemonic corresponds to a specific aspect of patient care. They are F stands for feeding, A for analgesia, S for sedation, T for thromboembolic prophylaxis, H head of bed elevation, U for ulcer prophylaxis, G for glycemic control, S for spontaneous breathing trial, B for bowel moment, I for indwelling catheter, and D for drug de-escalation. Now, feeding. Malnutrition can lead to impaired immune function which results in poor own healing, risk for infection, and prolonged length of stay in ICUs. The nurse needs to ensure that the patient is receiving adequate nutrition either through enteral tube or parenteral routes. Enteral, if the patient is able to tolerate tube feeding, the patient will get enteral nutrition through oral, nasogastric tube, or a gastrostomy tube, depending on the patient's condition. For patient with mechanical ventilator, oral feed is not possible. In general, 20 to 25 kilocalorie per kilogram per day is acceptable and achievable target intake depends on the conditions. Enteral nutrition should be started early, preferably within 24 to 48 hours of ICU admission. Now, if the patient cannot tolerate enteral feeding, then will be an order administering nutrients intravenously, for an example, intravenous TPN. Nurses need to check the tube placement, position of the patient, previous feeding, any aspiration, rate of infusion before starting the feeding. For TPN administration, distal port of the central line is recommended. Now, A. Analgesia Pain can affect patient's psychological and physiological recovery. Critically ill patients have moderate to severe pain for many reasons. Excessive use of analgesia should be avoided. Nurses' responsibilities include pain assessment using appropriate scale, that is, visual analog scale, behavioral pain scale, etc., Pharmacological intervention, that is, administration of IV opioids, for example, morphine, fentanyl, 
hydromorphone as per the order. Non-opioids including NSAID, acetaminophen, ketamine and neuropathic agents. This we have discussed in one of our previous video and the link is added for your reference in the description below. Now, S. Sedation. Use of sedation should be minimized as much as possible. Use of sedation and analgesia for mechanically ventilated patient is to prevent pain and improve patient comfort, prevent fear, anxiety and agitation, to provide patient ventilator synchrony, which means when the settings on the ventilator are matched with that of the patient's respiratory system. Nurses' responsibilities include administering benzodiazepines, example, midazolam, lorazepam, diazepam, etc., and non-benzodiazepines, example, propofol, dexmedetomidin, as per the order. To identify whether the sedation level is inadequate or over-sedated, nurses need to use sedation scale. Richmond Agitation Sedation Score, RAS, is the most validated and most widely used tool to assess depth of sedation. GCS assessment also should be considered. Spontaneous Awakening Trial Mechanically ventilated patient who receives continuous sedation infusion will receive Spontaneous Awakening Trial, SAT, daily, during his ICU stay. It is done by turning off all continuous sedative infusions and checking the response of the patient. Over sedation leads to prolonged mechanical ventilation and it leads to ventilator associated pneumonia and increases the length of stay, inability to communicate, failure to initiate spontaneous breathing trial and increased risk for delirium. Inadequate sedation leads to pain and anxiety, agitation, patient ventilator dyssynchrony, self-removal of tubes or catheter, care provider assault. Now, T, thromboembolic prophylaxis. To prevent the formation of blood clots, that is thromboembolism, particularly deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, which can be serious and potentially life-threatening. Critically ill patients in the ICU are at increased risk of thromboembolic events due to factors such as bedridden, immobility, surgery, trauma and underlying medical conditions. Venous thromboembolism prophylaxis involves a combination of pharmacological and mechanical interventions. Nurses need to ensure whether patient is getting pharmacological or mechanical interventions. Pharmacological interventions include administration of heparin, low molecular weight heparin, clexane, etc. And mechanical interventions include Sequential Compressive Devices, SCD, and Thromboembolic Deterrent Stockings, that is TED. For patients at high bleeding risk, mechanical interventions will be provided. Now, H, Head of Bed Elevation. To prevent aspiration and improve respiratory function, Nurses need to ensure whether the head of bed is elevated to at least 30 to 40 degrees unless it is contraindicated. Some ICU bed has angle indicator at the site to know the exact angle. And the pictures are here for your reference. Now you, stress ulcer prophylaxis. Nurses need to ensure whether the patient is receiving stress ulcer prophylaxis or not. H2 receptor antagonists, that is medications such as ranitidin, femotidin, etc. Proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole and pantoprazole, 
are also commonly used for stress ulcer prophylaxis. Next, G, glycemic control. To prevent and manage hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and DKA is crucial in critical care because uncontrolled glucose level leads to increased mortality, length of stay, infection, and decreased wound healing. First, blood glucose targets. Nurses need to ensure that the blood sugar level are within the target set by the doctors. Example, range of 140 to 180 mg per dl and follow your institutional policy regarding the target. Next, continuous glucose monitoring. Monitor the blood glucose in frequent intervals. Next, insulin therapy. Insulin infusion protocols and sliding scale are often implemented to titrate insulin based on blood glucose measurements. These protocols aim to maintain blood glucose levels within the target range. Nutritional support. Enteral nutrition is preferred over parental nutrition when feasible as it can help regulate glucose levels more effectively. Now, S. Spontaneous breathing trial. To prevent ventilator-associated pneumonia and reduce length of stay in ICU, SBT is a trial conducted after spontaneous awakening trial to assess a patient's ability to breathe spontaneously without the support of the ventilator. During spontaneous breathing trial, nurses need to observe respiratory parameters, assess patient comfort, and communicate any signs of distress or improvement to the healthcare team. Now B, bowel movement. To prevent constipation and diarrhea, because it may lead to patient's discomfort and diarrhea leads to electrolyte imbalances and feeding intolerances. Immobility, certain medications and critical illness can contribute to constipation and diarrhea in ICU patients. Nurses need to check bowel sounds, tenderness, distension, etc. Nurses need to ensure whether the patient has adequate hydration, receiving fiber-rich diet, receiving enema and laxatives. Also, monitor electrolyte imbalances in case if the patient has diarrhea. Now I, indwelling catheter. To prevent infection, that is catheter-associated urinary tract infection, CAUTI, central line-associated bloodstream infection, CLAPSI, and peripheral line-associated bloodstream infection, PLAPSI. Indwelling catheters include Foley catheter, peripherally inserted central catheter, central venous catheter, arterial line, epidural line, etc. Nurses need to follow the care bundle, that is CAUTI bundle, Collapsy bundle, assessment of the site for any signs of local infection, check for the urine and blood culture report, and if any abnormality is present, inform the doctor and change the line. Now, D, de escalation of antibiotics. The goal is to minimize the risk of antibiotic resistance and reduce the potential for adverse effects associated with broad-spectrum antibiotics. In simple term, it means broad-spectrum to narrower-spectrum antibiotics. Nurses' role includes check the antibiotic days, check the culture report, check the total leukocyte count, check the vitals and note down the fever spikes. So, so far we have discussed what is fast hux bid, what is the use of fast hux bid in ICU and what are the nursing considerations. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.